All right, welcome to the June 30th CESS meeting. Uh, we have a planned conversation about records and tuples. Um, and, uh, and all parties who are interested in that are here. Um, uh, I will leave it to Mark. Mark, would you like to make an announcement about CESS? Yeah. Uh, so there's uh, actually uh, two things going on. Um, uh, the big one is the festival that's coming up. Uh, the, uh, that is a group of people that are going to be gathered for a full week uh, in uh, Dean's house, which is also the, um, uh, what, what was before COVID, the Agoric uh, headquarters as well. In many cases, we'll all be, now that we're all vaccinated, we'll all be gathering for a full week. Uh, this is uh, several folk from MetaMask as well as Agoric. Um, uh, in order to attack the core of the Cess Shin, to try to find flaws, to try to attack it, to try to um, uh, uh, just do a, do a hardcore attack review, as we call it. And that's uh, every attack review I've lived through before has been a hellacious and incredibly productive experience. And it's going to be uh, an immersive week, which is the right way to do that, um, where we just all do this in the same place at the same time in a full-time manner. Uh, the other thing that's going on is that um, uh, Least Authority is a security auditing firm very active in the blockchain space. And they'll also, um, uh, they are do, starting a audit of CES and examination, critical examination of the CES shim. And Least Authority, as one would guess from their name, uh, is um, uh, an organization that already knows about issues of capabilities and capability security model and lease authority. Uh, and some of the people who are uh, uh, prominent in that uh, area will be part of this audit effort. So, so we've got some good critical examination going on. Awesome. The uh, other point is something that, uh, uh, thank you, Alex, for keeping these up to date. I believe that you are the one who leaves these notes in our agenda, uh, that uh, this is the last CES meeting before the submission deadline for topics for the next plenary. Um, I think that we are pretty, we know what we're going to talk about next time at plenary. Uh, Leo, are we, um, are we going to see realms come up for another round of conversation? Um, probably next week. I'm try. Um, I'm just back from a more than a week long uh, vacation. Mm. I'm reaching out to Jordan, but I still need to get him to to answer. Like, I've had a follow up after that meeting. Uh, just a quick heads up. I had a follow up after that meeting. I talked to Jordan, um, trying to get to the next steps. Jordan wanted to, wanted to understand more, and he. He said he would love like to see like some uh, polyfill implementation with an actual main brains framework uh, on top of that. And we actually had those. I just had to send the links separately. Um, I'm not sure if that's like good enough for what he wanted to, to see. Um, but I still like I still try to get uh, him to uh, to tell me uh, what he, he thought about that. That, that happened before uh, vacation time. And now I think he got, he got more, more than 10 days to, to look at it. Uh, if not, I hope he does it uh, this week and then we can get like some other update in the next week. He wanted to see a name, main brains framework uh, working with that realm. And I show like, hey, here we, uh, we have a main brain that is basically uh, the same main brain structure that uh, Karidi uh, did with the near main brain, but it's just adapted for, for this one. It's not the com full complete main brain system, like all the things that we have for, and we are using for Salesforce right now. And also that the, uh, the polyfill is pretty complete in the terms of where we use evaluate. Uh, but of course, um, I'm not getting that uh, frame uh, the, the polyfill with the import due to like so many uh, entanglements that we would need to 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 have to implement uh, the import uh, value part. Um, 
in a polyfill, like in a real world, it wouldn't be amazing. But we have those parts. And we wanted, uh, and the, the parts are working and they're working together. I have the polyfill working, uh, the main brain framework working on the top of polyfill. And I have another example of the, this main brain framework uh, using a, an iframe directly. And the results are the same. I just switch uh, from one thing to another, the results are the same. Um, this is like, this is a part that I like I, that gets me satisfied with this main brain framework implementation with the polyfill and everything, because I'm still getting the same results and being able to uh, verify those. I have plenty of tests for the polyfill. I have more sort of like manual tests for this main brain framework, uh, but that I just need to run directly uh, to, to verify results. But uh, they seem okay, and I hope Jordan sees it, uh, sees it the same way. Let's see how it goes uh, for the next week. Awesome. Well, with that, let's uh, let's dive into the uh, the oft postponed topic of the day. Uh, uh, Robin, I believe you're leading. Yes. Uh, sorry, my external webcam is not functioning properly, so I'm not going to look at you. <laughs> All right, sure, I can. I can play. Uh, yes, so the idea that we have um, to, so, so last time we were kind of um, stuck on an objection, I guess from Mark, about boxes um, and how they interact with realms. So today we would like to propose the following and then uh, get some feedback on it and, and see if that, that's going to be a design that's going to play nice uh, with uh, realms. So the what we're proposing today is to change the behavior of boxes uh, if they want to pass through um, realm boundaries. So we would essentially uh, say that you should throw if you try to pass a box uh, across a realm boundary to another realm. Um, the reason for that is that from our point of view, in record and tuple, we are more interested in the uh, developer experience aspect of the box rather than having that as a tool to transmit to another realm. If you want to transmit um, that kind of data, uh, so that means uh, objects uh, inside of a record and tuple structure, you might as well use a membrane to do that. Um, and you don't need a box. So essentially, the proposal is if uh, the Realm API see a box, they, they can throw. And how we uh, intend to give you that uh, possibility of checking is through uh, an abstract operation that we have written in the spec that's called recursive uh, contains box. So that's uh, part of the record and tuple spec. So uh, yeah, you can or we can add uh, that check to um, to uh, realms in order to make sure that this uh, that uh, any structure doesn't contain any boxes etc so you're saying any structure beyond just records and tuples uh, it would be i mean maybe maybe i can explain uh, i think this this is, we kind of jumped into a lot of details so that the model is we have Records and tuples, which are which are primitives, but they can contain boxes, which which can can have objects. So yeah, there's that, a fundamental operation, it. box dot contains box, something like that. It would be named something different that says whether something contains a box. So we we were previously thinking that maybe a box could be something that you opaquely pass to a realm and then pass back. Uh, and I think Bradley correctly pointed out that this is this gets very complicated. And so we're instead thinking that we treat boxes or records and tuples containing boxes just the same way as we treat objects. So if you're passing it, somebody has static in the background. Can everybody mute? Um, it, oh yeah, thanks. Um, so we would treat it just the same way as with uh, objects in realms and in same origin iframes. So in the same origin iframe case, if you have a record in, or tuple with a box in it, sure, it's fine. You can just pass it to another 
same origin iframe. But if you pass it to a realm, it would be an error, just like if you're passing an, an object to a realm, because uh, that you should instead be handling it with a membrane. I'm just saying what, Rob, what Robin said, but in different words. So hopefully this should address one concern. There was another concern that Mark had raised, which is shouldn't we like not do records and tuples and instead do some deep freeze thing? And I wanted to talk about that too, but maybe we could first talk about the realm issue and, and the, the box issue, and then we could talk about that other one. Uh, let, let, let me, um, just to, to, to give some orientation about the, the, the the overall shape of the concern. There is a lot of existing code that uh, has logic, has, has basically uh, 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 case switch logic of the form, whether, you know, whether obviously whether it's a conditional or a case. Um, but uh, is this a primitive? If so, just let it through because primitives are safe otherwise do some kind of recursive wrapping or unwrapping or whatever it is. So, and that's in particular very common with membranes is, is just that, that if it's a primitive, it's just a pass through with no further intervention. Uh, and if records and tuples are considered primitives uh, and they're transitively primitive, then the rationale for that case switch uh, continues to apply that case that that letting if it's transitively immutable transitively primitive then letting it through in that branch of the logic of those of of those libraries uh, is still valid it's still safe for the material used uh, if, 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 let me just... Mark, can i can i stop you you, you explained this before uh i think this is an important issue but i think it's separate you're talking about whether box is viable at all uh, so maybe we could do this topic. Please mute whoever keeps having static. Uh, maybe we can do this topic and then uh, okay. start to talk about if we have box, then how would it work with realms? Then we could talk about, can we have box? And then we could talk about, we could also talk about this broader issue that you also raised about, do we want to focus on records and tuples or focus on deep freeze? Okay. Is that an okay division of the- uh, so, 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 so let me just mention one more thing on the deep freeze side, which is, uh, uh, immu conventional immutable objects, you know, deeply frozen plain objects um, uh, would still have identity. Uh, in thinking about your proposal from last time about whether we could conceive of records and tuples, not as primitives, but as objects that are both immutable and without identity, uh, a concern that I have there, not necessarily fatal, but something definitely to, to examine uh, is, uh, that means that now there are objects that are considered to be objects, not primitives, that cannot be keys and weak maps, uh, and that you cannot have weak references to. So it, ju it just kind of explodes the state space of combinations of objects versus non-objects versus keys versus not keys. Uh, so, so that's it. I've, oh. ra I've raised the issues I wanted to raise. Okay, I, can we come back to that second issue also after we? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted, any yeah, that, that. Okay, if there's no concerns about this, then I guess we can go into those other issues that Mark raised. So I can answer both of those. Or Robin, did you want to answer them? You keep on muting. No, no, please, please, please do, Dan. Please do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So for the second one about um, records and tuples and weak map keys, I think when a record or tuple contains a box that has an object in it, then it would be okay to have as a weak map key. Um, but that's kind of more complicated and exotic. Um, Overall, about these categorizations, you're you're right. These would be different kinds of objects. They would they they would create these different categorizations. Sorry, just a second. Uh, so uh, there there would be um, there are different cat. So sure, they're they're compared by value but then they may deeply contain objects. 
And so there's different ways that we can slice up the space. I think we've shown that it's worth it. I mean, also Bradley has shown that it's worth it to have these things that are compared by value at some level and contain objects. And, uh, you know, and there are different ways that we could set up the defaults we talked about previously. They could be identity of those objects or they could be primitives, like that's one or the other. We have a clear decision space. And uh, I think it's overall worth it to, to do, even though these costs that you enumerated, uh, you know, exist. So one thing I would add is it isn't just switch cases that test if something is a primitive. There are also switch cases that test if something has identity that are checking type of object and type of function. And so you get the inverse as well. Um, where yeah, the, the same thing, right? Yeah, no matter so, what we do in either direction, we're going to break some of those. Um, well, with the checking for object types, uh, I've seen this done, I've done it myself, where you check for those in, in order to explicitly wrap them differently, such as putting them into weak maps. If we introduce a new type that, uh, is an object without identity and it has a different type of, let's call it record or whatever. Um, if you do that, you're going to break one half of those switch cases in either direction. Um, I'm not sure that we're actually safer by stating only the switch cases that check for Boolean string, et cetera, are safe. Um, I don't think that's actually true right now because we've introduced more primitives over time. We've never introduced more identity over time right. for type of. And so I generally code with the pattern of checking for identity types because I don't know if primitive types are gonna expand over time. So the, I have yeah, the I, kind of opposite approach of- yeah, they, just, just, I guess that's- that's what I assume Mark was getting at, that these would need to be type object if they might contain an object. Uh, uh, yes, that is what I was getting at. That, that general, the, the, so there's obviously, there's all sorts of different ways that people write these switch statements. Uh, the one that I've found myself writing a lot and the one that I've seen a lot are the following, um, uh, uh, using an if capital object of X triple equal X as a primitive test, which basically says, uh, if it's a primitive, then capital object of it uh, creates a wrapper, which is not the same as the thing itself. Uh, so if capital object of it is the same as the thing it is itself, then it's an object, not a primitive. So that's, that's one pattern I've seen. Uh, and uh, uh, Chris Kowal will be quick to point out that um, uh, Crockford or, or Chip maybe, that Crockford uh, uh, is really quite horrified about that pattern. But uh, nevertheless, uh, I've used it and I've seen other people use it. Uh, the other one, the, well, the other two is a complete enumeration of all the normal type ofs with a default that says, uh, oops, there's a type that I'm unfamiliar with, so throw. So that code is in some sense safe against any introduction of a new type of uh, safe in the sense that it will fail safe. It won't get misled into doing something that's, un that's silently unsafe. Uh, and then uh, the remaining one uh, is the one that Bradley brought up, which is uh, assuming that the object types are exactly type of x triple equal object and, and uh, x is not null uh, and uh, uh, type, of, type of x triple equals function. So uh, if it's uh, any string other than function or object, it's assumed to be primitive. And, and I've both written that and I've seen that. Um, so, uh, so given that, and given the security assumptions behind making those tests, what I would say is that, the, uh, is that of the possibilities we're talking about, um, the ones that are not safety breaking uh, would be that records and tuples are introduced with new type ofs and are transitively primitive. That would not break any assumptions of such code. Uh, or that 
we support, uh, we have provide good language support for um, uh, transitively immutable object structures with identity. And then those are simply type of object because they're, they're simply objects within the existing object model. Uh, but we, we provide better language support like purify primitives or harden primitives or whatever, or maybe syntax uh, provide better pr language primitives for knowing that you've created uh, transitively immutable object structures. Um, okay. So and everything between those two, I, th I think, is problematic. Can you elaborate on what you mean by this purified primitive? Because I actually, I've only heard very vague descriptions of it. I really can't imagine how it's going to solve the equality problem, how it's going to well, allow structural comparison. Okay. It won't solve the equality problem. So if the equality problem is the driving problem, uh, let's, let's, let me talk about that some. Uh, so, so I mean, Bradley gave a, gave a very strong case of this do, double key thing and a record or tuple with two things that are boxes is a pretty elegant solution to that without requiring a special case, if that were okay. So I would like to understand why in between is problematic. Uh, so I'm sorry, so I, I did the, the case that Bradley gave, I think I'm not familiar with it. I mean, the whole like uh, double key proposal. Like it's a whole separate proposal that would be kind of subsumed by records and tuples with boxes. So, um, so I can just clarify, yeah. So he's talking about richer keys and a significant portion of the use cases for richer keys would be doable with records and tuples. Not all of them, um, but a significant amount. In particular, the use case I am interested in um, for records and tuples is not uh, affected by having box inside them, but I have seen comments on my other proposal uh, that people want to get those kind of keys of multiple component parts done easier, and that would be solved with box. So let, let me make sure I understand. The idea is that, um, uh, so first of all, you're, you're trying to allow these both as weak map keys as well as map keys. Is that correct? Uh, for richer keys, the intent was to allow weak map keys. For records and tuples, I don't know the actual champion stance. You would have, they're here. Well, I was, I was just suggesting that they could be weak map keys as well if they contain boxes. I don't see why that wouldn't work. Um, um, uh, they, it would also work if they contain symbols, correct? Uh, if we have symbols as we map keys, but that was not accepted for stage three when it last meeting, because use cases were not sufficiently persuasive. Okay, this this would be an additional use case. Uh, not, I mean, I think, I think we would need something more concrete to be use case. I think that was that you know the the presentation I think was too abstract for the community. Okay. Um, uh, I'm still hopeful about uh, um, symbols as weak map keys. Um, the uh, in any case, uh, uh, um, whatever the the current status of uh, advancement in the committee, uh, technically, uh, uh, symbols as weak map keys uh, uh, mean that records and tuples containing symbols. Uh, could also be weak map keys with the advantages that you're talking about. Uh, yeah. Uh, Daniel, in case you cut yourself off, I heard about a, sim a syllable and then your mute light went on. Oh, I said, yes, I agree. You were, you were saying, does this meet the the use case, I mean, does this all fit together? And I said, yes, I think. Okay, good. good, thank you. So, uh, you know, I think we, we've made a case for why box is valuable. Um, uh, and yeah, I was definitely kind of talking too quickly through the weak map case, and that definitely deserves more, more thought. Um, but the, um, you know, 
I think we, you know, the, the, the kind of structural comparison is a core goal of the proposal and being able to have references to objects is a core thing that we found is a requirement from, from users as well as the, um, you know, people talking about symbols being, symbols as weak map keys being too awkward a way to accomplish the same thing. That's the feedback we've gotten. So this is why we've been proposing box as this replacement. So, or is it as like an, an upgrade that lives alongside symbol as weak map keys? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I, I understand. We'll like to understand a little bit more about what, I can see how uh, it does complicate this code a little bit, but I'm really, you know, I'm, I don't really understand the compatibility issues because when you have a code base that has membranes, I mean, can, can't you upgrade to the newer version of membranes that knows about records and tuples? I don't understand why that's this, this gigantic blocker. The, the problem is that there's existing membranes out there in the world that become unsafe, uh, especially when the, the, the new abilities are reachable by syntax. Um, uh, you, can, you, can we examine these to figure out, I mean, you mentioned certain code patterns. <laughs> Yeah, an example would be very useful. You just mentioned code patterns abstractly. I think if we look at the specific membranes that you're worried are in common use and might be composed, this only becomes an issue they're composed with code that creates records and jumbles, right? Um, it, it, so um, if, the, if, the, if, if, the, if the code on either side of the membrane is creating, you know, is creating right records and tuples, and then that's being passed through a membrane that's ignorant of records and tuples and is using one of these code patterns, then it will allow the record and tuple over to the other side of the membrane uh, without wrapping and unwrapping it, and thereby uh, not intermediate the box. Okay, so, uh, right. So one thing we could do is we, we talked about the identity list objects and the thing that you thought was bad about those is that they can't be weak map keys. Mm -hmm. uh, but I imagine that if you try to use them as a weak map key, they would throw an exception. So what would the problem be? What would the security problem be? So that the, the, the weak map, having them not be weak map keys is not, that itself is not a security problem. Uh, uh, that and it's, um, uh, that is, just a complexity of the language problem in that now we've got primitives that um, can't be weak map keys. We potentially have primitives that can be weak map keys. We have objects that can be weak map keys and we have objects that cannot be weak map keys. It's just, it makes, um, I mean, in some sense, I suppose it makes it orthogonal, which could be thought of as simpler, but it's, it's certainly um, uh, a lot, it makes the language have a lot more to explain in terms of understanding the case analysis of what you need to do to deal with all the value types in the language. Okay, so uh, I can see how these are downsides, but I'm not quite convinced that they're like fatal flaws. I would be a lot more convinced if we saw real, well, like we were saying, compositions of membrane systems that that really show that it that it causes a problem to use record and tuple. Like, what if we what if we work today to really try to change as many membrane code bases as possible to using this pattern of checking only the types that it knows about and throwing an error on types that it doesn't know about? Would we be able to deploy updates over the next two years, say, before records and tuples come out? Because we we have a long lead time here, and we're identifying this issue. And it only happens when you integrate a code base together with an old membrane system and putting it on an engine that has records and tuples. Okay, I think that's a fair question. So do people with experience, I mean, including Mark, people who deploy membrane systems, do you think it'll be practical to, to make this kind of change to the, to the type checking? Uh, 
Yeah, the, the, and the, the issue is obviously not so much for the membrane, for the particular membrane libraries that you know about, because obviously for those we can just do it. Uh, the question is, can we identify um, all of the things that we would be breaking that we don't know about, that we don't currently know about? Uh, it's, you know, it's very, very much the way we've dealt with other um, uh, issues about TC39 can't break the web. Um, uh, how do we discover the, the breakages that cause us to back off? And this one's harder because the kind of breakage we're worried about is the silent unsafety, whereas generally the way we discover things that cause us to back off is because something visibly doesn't work. So maybe, maybe if we examine these code paths, we'll find a place that either naturally or we could make some change in the semantics that will make the error be, be greater if we look at how these things, these things work. Um, I'm trying to think of an example, but you know, for example, if you made a proxy with the, the record as its target, then I think we would make that not work. But that's not something that you do because you use a shadow target. Um, but maybe there's something analogous to that, some operation involved in setting up a membrane that, uh, you know, that we can kind of make sure wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. that's, that's an interesting question. Yeah, if there is some, some way to introduce all of this such that uh, old code fails safe rather than silently becomes unsafe, uh, that would certainly be uh, uh, a big advance. This is something that Robin and I can't lead ourselves. This is something that we would need from the, the membrane community. I guess these two kind of suggestions where one suggestion is, um, one suggestion is looking into how, um, you know, whether the type checks that you know about can be changed, whether that's practical. And the other suggestion being about, uh, can we see the exact code patterns so that we can figure out if we can kind of squeeze in an error in some other place in the path? I think these are good questions. Okay, um, thanks for thanks for talking about this. Um, yeah, thank you very much. I, I think for now we're going to continue developing the record and tuple. Or I want to suggest to to Robin, the, the champion, that we continue developing the proposal uh, with the you know as it is right now for for now with records and tuples being primitives and being able to contain boxes because we've gotten, this is the direction that the, that the community feedback has, has pushed us in, hoping that we'll be able to resolve this membrane issue in one or both of those ways that we just articulated. And then if we run into to roadblocks with those, then we can go back and revisit it. Uh, could you, what, what do you think about splitting the proposals? Have, member, have uh, records and tuples be without box, be one proposal, and then have the, the, the addition of boxes be a separate proposal, uh, which can, so that all of the discussion and objections and alternatives to box can all be um, uh, uh, focused on the second proposal without inhibiting the first one. Uh, I um, that's an important option to consider. The main thing is that when we proposed records and tuples by themselves, we had so much feedback about the lack of box that many, many people really insisted that box was an essential feature of records and tuples. Um, yeah. We're not, uh, uh, you know, we're not totally convinced uh, we've gone back and forth on this ourselves. I, I, I think personally that uh, it, is, it is technically definitely doable. We can definitely separate them 
um, whether we want as champions to do it, I think we need to discuss that because there is a possibility that if we separate bots, we kind of also like, if we're not sure we have a way to solve those issues, we're essentially killing bots. So this is something that we are, um, that we need to discuss, that that's it. So I can't uh, guarantee anything just right now. Okay, I think that's a, that's a good concern. Let me, let me rephrase the concern and see how re, you react to the rephrased concern. Uh, if it turns out that the box problem is unsolvable uh, and therefore records and tuples with box are not possible, uh, would you rather have records and tuples without box in the language or would you rather not have any of this in the language? That's a, that's a tough question to answer just right there because there are a lot of different conflicting opinions in the community and I don't want to talk for everyone. Some people will definitely think that box is very important and some people don't care and think that box is actually a bad thing but they would just not use it, right? Um, and yeah, I, I don't want to, to speak for anyone before and for that. So I, I, I see I see the problem, Mark, and like I see the, the duality of solutions here. So just, oh. just need more time to, to decide. So I can state that I would still want record and tuple, but I think separating it from box might just introduce more problems down the line. Um, in particular, the kind of coding patterns we're talking about right now are making assumptions about what state can be kept within a object graph if you're given a value. If we um, don't include box, you can already attach state with maps to things uh, as a lookup table of sorts. So we can already attach some state to records, but it's not identity-based state. Um, with box, you're essentially doing that in a way that's reflective. You can traverse and find it, walk and find it, instead of needing to have this side table. I think if people are making the assumption that we introduce record and tuple, and you cannot traverse in order to find this kind of mutable state because there is no box, we just are making it harder for box to exist because you're encouraging coding patterns roughly that state that these are safe when we know we're planning on effectively trying to make them have mutable state potentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if I completely agree with that because we would be making it very clear to everybody that box may exist in the future, so we can discourage that pattern. How uh, are we going to discourage it, though? Well, I'm not sure because we would want people to check the contains box function, but that function won't exist yet. So there's no, it's not a great, not a great pattern to encourage people to use. Uh, but I do want to uh, kind of question a little bit the premise of the way that Mark framed this. Mark was saying, if we can't solve the box problem, I think, I think we have a solution. The, the thing is that it has trade-offs. And the question is whether we want to, to take those trade-offs. I mean, I think we, we identified that this has to do with really concrete like things about the world, like what kinds of membrane systems are in use and what do we care about breaking? What do we deem to be changeable and not changeable? I guess everyone here works on pieces of software that are maintained. And um, I'm, not, I'm not sure, I don't have enough background on how membrane systems are used today, but I'm not sure if we're yet at the point where we have to worry about old membrane systems being used on new engines where the margin of age is more than two years. I would, I would, I would think that, you know, if you're using it in a web browser, which is the case where you know, the, um, you have the least control over your engine. Well, two years is enough time to update your website, maybe. You know, you should update your dependencies over the course of two years, I think. And if you're using, if you're doing an embed system, then you have control over the, the engine that it's running and you'll have an explicit upgrade step. Uh, just so, as, as an example, 
the um, Kaha taming membrane from the Google Kaha project, uh, which is the, the you know, predecessor of modern CES. Um, it was a CES designed around uh, ECMAScript 5 era JavaScript. And the taming membrane doesn't use a proxy, so you can't, so to search for it, if you were looking for proxy, you wouldn't find it. Um, the, uh, and uh, it would, um, you know, it's no longer being maintained. There's certainly not uh, the, um, it would be very difficult to get Google's attention to try to upgrade it. Um, uh, to spend the effort to try to upgrade it, um, uh, but it's it's you know it's out there. It's being used uh, not just by Google, uh, and uh, this would introduce an unsafety in it. Okay, so if we have one particular library that we're concerned about. Let's dig into its code. Mm -hmm. Also, let's see if we can put out a strong PSA to say this is no longer secure to help users with that code base because you know, probably you'll, you know about other bugs in it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, um, Mostly I'm using it as an example, but yes, the, the particular thing should be, you know, the, the, the we should de definitely be concerned about the particular. I'm, yeah. I'm not convinced that we should be concerned about unbounded examples of membrane libraries that might exist. I'm not convinced that, that should be in scope for us because even when we're talking about web compatibility, web compatibility is not, limitless. Sometimes you do things that have web compatibility uh, it, risk. It's certainly, and, certainly not limitless. We've, we've definitely, uh, you know, in the in, in TC39, over and over again, uh, we have taken steps that have been technically not upwards compatible from the web. Uh, we've released them. We've, um, uh, but we, we try very hard to be careful. Uh, and to weigh the trade-offs. And so I certainly completely agree that these are all trade-offs, uh, but we, tr we do try very hard and we consider a very small fraction of the web being broken to be adequate deterrence for introducing something that would break them. Uh, and we certainly take unmaintained old stuff very seriously into account with regard to trying to avoid breaking things. Yeah, so for that unmaintained old stuff, I think we take that very seriously when it's very widely deployed. So the question is about whether this is very widely deployed. And in this case, not just widely deployed with existing code. No, this is why move tools is relevant. This is why we made compatibility issues for changes for move tools, because the old version of move tools was widely deployed. It wasn't because it was deployed at all, because it, one small deployment might not be sufficient to, to be deemed a significant web compatibility issue. So with Kaha already being marked as unmaintained and no longer secure, as Mateu uh, mentioned in the, in the chat, um, I guess our job would be to determine whether Kaha or some other membrane is in a sufficiently wide deployment where it's mixed with newer engines, for example, in the web browser mm -hmm. and newer code, for example, with user supplied code, uh, that, that this could be an issue. Mm -hmm. Um, so the, I, th I think we might, our, you know, our subjective sense of the weighting might be uh, different, but the question is completely valid. I mean, we all agree that it's a trade-off and that uh, TC39 has proceeded to do things that have, that have caused minor breakage and have certainly been deterred by things that have gone over some, some threshold. Um, so so all, of this is, all of these questions are completely valid. Okay, so what, what do you see as our next steps here? Sorry, I'm not sure if you heard me. For, for next steps here, I was suggesting some, uh, some investigations that the membrane community could do. Um, does anybody want to take that action item? About, about investigating these, these legacy membranes that we would have trouble updating and seeing how they would or wouldn't fail with different record or tuple designs.
It would seem the nays have it. Who? Sorry? The, 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 I don't hear volunteers. Right, okay. So if we don't have concrete evidence of this, then I don't see it as a sufficient reason to block the, the proposal with box included. I think someone should put in the work to, to, to collect this evidence, concrete as opposed to theoretical, that this is a real risk. I think the burden of proof argument there is on the wrong foot. I don't see how we can collect this information. I, I, part of the issue that I'm raising is that uh, it's not clear how to collect this information in an adequate way because there's no obvious symptom of whether, so, whether code is doing membrane-like things. Uh, for example, it can be doing membrane-like things without using uh, the proxy constructor. Um, so, um, uh, or you know, to put it another way, something that's where it's doing this kind of um, a case division where it's making an unsafe assumption is making an assumption that would be unsafe on one side of that case division, um, with you know membranes being the the sort of the the obvious example of that highlights what kind of assumption goes with that side of the case split. Uh, so whenever a change is made to JavaScript, there's you know an infinite number of statements about JavaScript that become false mm -hmm. that were previously true. So uh, I think we, I think to, to assert that this is a blocker for the proposal, we should have some evidence that this, that this occurs. I don't think this can is we, too much. Can we just focus on the type of patterns? Cause you can, you can use a code search utility to search all of NPM pretty easily. If we well, just I mean, know, I'm confident that people are using those type of patterns. The question is whether there's later downstream stuff that depends on it in a wrong way. Um, yes, but how how are we going to get evidence is what Mark is asking. Like right. what is the evidence we're gathering? Because like you said, you can't search for code. Yeah, and, and certainly if we search for, uh, you know, type of um, uh, where, where function and object is treated one way and all others are treated another way. Well, I'm sure we'll get millions of hits. I'm not even sure right. you get that there is even so many ways of doing the type of check that in comparison. Uh, I have utilities. So that's good. I mean, the other thing is, I didn't hear like an extremely killer argument against the identity of objects. Mark argued that it would be more complex, which I, you know, which I did it. That's a trade-off. That doesn't sound to me like there's absolutely no solution for box. That sounds like a solution that's kind of suboptimal in some way. I'm sorry. I think I'm, I missed the critical syllable. Uh, that what would be more complex? Oh, the uh, the identityless objects solution. Yes. Yeah, you, you articulated, and I agree with you that it adds complexity. What I didn't understand was why this is fatally bad. It is so. I'm not. I'm, I did not say it was fatally bad. So, uh, so that is something that that uh, I would consider to be, um, you know, once. I mean, obviously, it's, these are all trade offs. Uh, complexity is certainly a cost. Uh, but uh, the making these identityless objects, I don't see that that introduces an unsafety. So, um, and it's the silent unsafety, which is the thing that really terrifies me. So, so this would not be on the, the bad side of the silent unsafety issue. So I, I would be fine with, as a resolution to this meeting, I don't know if Robin would, would disagree to say like, okay, well, because it resolves the silent unsafety issues that we know about, we're gonna postulate that we'll go with identityless objects uh, together with like a record dot is record and tuple dot is tuple thing. And those will fully look like objects to both tests, the type of test and the wrapper test. Um, but they'll still have structural equality and they'll have box and they'll have a box that contains box. And it does have this extra source of complexity where now, um, 
you know, if it doesn't contain a box, then it cannot go in a weak map. And that's a, um, or if it doesn't contain a box that has an object in it, then it, then it can't go in a weak map. And that's, you know, that's extra complexity, but that we think it's worth it because it avoids this, this risk. Mm -hmm. um, and that could be our current like working hypothesis coming out of this meeting. Okay. I, I, um, I, think, I think that's, a, I think that's a fair hypothesis. So um, one concern I have with just that direction is record is record and tuple is tuple, how they behave with wrapped proxies. Um, what do you mean wrapped? Oh, so we would, we would still say that they cannot be proxy targets also. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. That, that, so, you know, if you want to make, if you want to proxy a record or tuple, I mean, if you want to do a membrane around a record or tuple, just make a record or tuple on the other side. Oh yeah, the other thing about them is as I didn't do this object, they do have this very bizarre thing where when you get the prototype, you're getting the prototype of the current realm. So they are like realmless objects oh, also. Oh, 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 oh. I'm glad you mentioned that. That's very, very bizarre for objects. Well, sure, but it's more like primitives, but that's that's how it has to work. Otherwise they'll, they'll break but the property. Record shouldn't have a prototype. Type except oh, so in the identityless object case, the get prototype of method of this exotic, extremely exotic object will look at what the current realm is and give you that record prototype. The current, when you say the current realm, uh, the key thing about the current realm by the by the by the primitive promotion is that current is syntactic. It's it's the code that contains the dot. Um, uh, one of the things we must avoid at all cost is dynamic scoping, is caller sensitivity. So, sh sure. Yeah, I see how this is kind of dynamic scoping. Uh, so if you want to say that this is a fatal flaw, and so for this reason, uh, identity of objects don't work, I would understand that argument as well. So all ECMAScript code executes in the lexical um, realm the the dot occurs in mark yeah there are some web specific cases where this is not true but they cannot be observed without a host hook being used right right the um uh the the cases where there's caller sensitivity that is observable by javascript code are are you know uh, I think there's one minor case that um, Kevin Gibbons identified that we agreed is a spec bug that should be fixed, uh, and that in general we've you know we've 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 succeeded at avoiding caller sensitivity in the JavaScript language, and we must continue to do so. But th this caller sensitivity is very scoped, and it's really exactly <laughs> like you know. Uh, okay, so if you want to block both of these, I really want to see more on the membrane side. I want, I think the, the it's not, a, it's not a web compatibility issue. It's a, it's a maintaining the security of things that actually, given the history of it, probably aren't secure because these old membranes do have security issues. I, I do think, I mean, I, I would expect that if you have a membrane that's actually secure, then over the course of two years, you're able to update it for this type of check. Um, so I'd, I'd suggest that there might be more possible exploration on the other side as well. Is it necessary for records and tuples to have a prototype at all? Yeah, yeah, because they have methods. Like tuples have to have array methods on them. It's incredibly uh, user-friendly compared to not having prototypes. For sure. For sure, I um, agree. With Records don't necessarily need to have a prototype. We have this debate about whether they should have no prototype or not. And I think, really? Robin, do you remember what the current draft says? Uh, current is, um, cur yeah, current is now for the uh, record prototype. I think yeah. that it could be made that tuples being struct-like, positional struct-likes might not need I mean, I agree that they would it would be useful to have a prototype, but I, I don't think that it's uh, it kills the idea. And there might be an, an avenue to explore there if it's impossible to avoid having dynamic scope revealed. 
I don't I don't see how this reveals dynamic scope because you have to do an object you have to do the object operation on it and that I mean uh, yeah if that's being if that being the case then maybe there's also the if it's also if there are other reasons why it avoids uh, dynamic scope I think that that avenue continues to be viable point uh, direction for further exploration to my knowledge, having looked at a few of these dynamic scoping things on the web, um, this does not introduce a new one. Um, we, yeah. we do have some dynamic scoping on the web with the incumbent realm stuff. Uh, wait, 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 wait. What does not introduce a new one? Uh, the dot accessor in a JavaScript source text producing the executing realms uh, prototype for record or tuple. The dot accessor, uh, um, I, I agree. The dot, but but that but that's not the only issue here. Uh, can you clarify which, how you are exposing uh, a non-executing realms prototype through JavaScript source text? Non-executing. The... So you're currently executing, you have an execution context in JavaScript. It's got an associated realm with it. And so that's going to give you whatever your dot accessor uh, does as a prototype. If you look up the global prototype for number or whatever, um, I'm unclear on how you're accessing. So if you have nested realms, on the web, there can be realm A and realm B. You're executing in realm B. I do know there are ways to access realm A's uh, <laughs> primordial uh, object wrapping. Um, I don't know how there's not any in, ability not, not, to do it. There's no JavaScript ability to do that. Yeah. So I. I mean, I, I share Bradley's analysis and really am skeptical that this makes things a lot worse. The other thing we could do is, um, well, yeah, we, we couldn't make them type of object, but then still have like a syntactic wrapper thing going on. Um, but we could have, you know, we could have special logic in get, I don't know. A point of order, I think that we're about to lose quorum uh, since we're over time. Uh, I'd like to call uh, the uh, point. Yeah, I can I can delegate my voice to Dan. It's it's fine. <laughs> okay. But uh, if other people are leaving, then yeah. Um, uh, do we want to continue having this conversation next week? Um, I think just I I only am really interested in continuing it if we can find that this introduces a new kind of dynamic scoping that's not true for the other primitive types. I think there was a broader part from before. It's, you know, yeah, it's, it's the, 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 about membranes and yeah. The, the bottom of the stack is what is the operating assumption for the evolution of the specification, and I think that wow. I, uh, I, having brought up the next meeting, next meeting is in the middle of festival. I I would like to propose that we actually cancel next meeting, or at uh, least. I would like to. Uh, not that's probably wise because at least you and myself will not be able to attend. Um, yeah, let, okay. let's, make, let's make that official. We'll, um, and then the week after that is probably, uh, it is definitely TC39. So the next two weeks of CES meetings, we should cancel now. Um, I'll make a note of that in the minutes. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the recording. Thank you.